Hello, thank you for watching this presentation. I'm Natalie, a product manager at Stillsoft. We develop apps for Jira, Confluence and Bitbucket. Today we are going to talk about smart project planning in Confluence, based on the default page properties and page properties report macros in combination with our table filter and charts and handy macros apps. In fact, this case is commonly used by our users. As an example, because we all are at the Team Up forum, we will consider a case of setting up a remote development team. Let's start with the final result overview. After that, step by step, we will explore the tools that allow us to build such a report. First of all, we see the page properties report. This report is a summary of all the tasks that we should complete to set up a remote team. With the help of the handy features, I'll tell you a bit later about them, we can change dates and statuses in the report on the go. Again, Chart is one of the best tools for a quick overview of the whole project or its parts. Again, Chart is a timeline that is used to illustrate how the project will run. Above the report, we see two Gantt charts. The first one displays an overall project schedule. To avoid getting lost in the schedule, we have Today Indicator. When we hover over the bars, we see the full task summary and the number of days to complete this task. We can also filter the source table and view more about a particular task by selecting it in the chart. The second chart displays task durations distributed by assignees. So the team members can look at this chart and see their own workload and progress in this project. Below the report, we see a pivot table and a chart that show us the progress in completing this project. All the charts are dynamic. When we filter the report, for example by the current user, all the charts are automatically updated. This means that the charts will be also updated in case of adding new entries to our table. The macros are compatible with any kind of table data. Would you like to learn how to create such a report? Let's start from scratch. We'll create a page devoted to one of the tasks in our list. In the Page Properties macro, we add properties one by one – Summary, Assignee, Start and End Dates. To track the progress, we use the Handy Status macro instead of the Default Status macro. The difference is that we can create as many sets as we need, insert the macro on the page and edit it with the help of the drop-down menu with the predefined values. This feature works in the Page Edit and View mode, including changing statuses directly in the report. We can also synchronize the status value with page labels to have a chance to use them in reporting in the future. One more use case is to use statuses as drop-down menus in table cells. So we add the location and select an appropriate option. The next field that we need to fill is assignee contacts. Let's take a step back. In our Confluence instance, we have a page that contains all the team members' contacts. In order not to duplicate this data on many pages all over the Confluence instance, we wrap each contact set in the table excerpt macro and define the unique name. Sometimes we need to place important but not so urgent information in pop-up hints or tooltips. Let's use the handy tip macro for this purpose. We highlight an object and insert the macro. After that, we insert the table excerpt include macro within the handy tip macro body, type the name and select the source page. This feature helps us to reuse the same datasets multiple times and maintain only one source of information. Ok, we have a global task. Now we need to break this task down into subtasks. 
we will use the default task list to add multiple subtasks. With the help of the Handy Macros app, we can add handy reminders to Confluence pages. We select day and time and recipients. In due time, the recipients will receive an email and a workbox notification. After writing multiple subtasks, let's review our page. As we can see, there are two page labels. The team up label is set manually. The status plant label is synchronized with the handy status macro. When we change the value and update the page, the label also updates. Moreover, in the page view mode, we can change reminder settings, dates, and add new tasks to the list. Here you can expand the task list panel to see the progress and filter tasks. Ok, now we have 20 pages and it's time to generate a report. We insert the Page Properties Report macro, select Labels, Space, set the column order and other settings. After updating the page, we get a report. Now we can start working with it. With the help of the Table Filtering Charts app, we can create a Gantt chart on the go. To build a simplest chart, we need at least one Labels column and two columns with dates – start date and end date. Now, actually, it's not super clear where we are and what phase of the project is going on. That's why in the page view mode we set the minimal date on Monday and set the scale step as 7 days. We also add a small table within the chart from table macro with the dynamic date – today. After configuring labels and values columns, we can see a vertical line with the today value. We can reconfigure the chart on the fly and add assignees instead of task titles to track personal progress.
Besides again chart, the app provides 15 different chart types. Sometimes we can build a chart based on raw non-numeric values. To find out how many tasks are resolved and how many tasks have left, in a couple of clicks we add the pivot table macro and aggregate data by task statuses. In the page view mode, we add the chart from table macro and configure a bar chart. For better viewing, we will show the data labels as a combination of number and percentage and height controls. And finally, to create a report or a dashboard, we need to build multiple charts. As in the case with contacts, we will use the same source table for all the charts on the reporting page. We combine the table excerpt and table excerpt include macros with the report and charts or pivot tables. Yes, the macros allow reusing content directly on the current page. And here is the final overview of the reporting page. Our remote development team is on the way to be set up. As you might have noticed, our business team that is actually performing these tasks is also a remote team. And this is what we really like the most about Atlassian products. They provide apps for all teams' collaboration all over the world. Table filtering charts and handy macros are available for server, data center and cloud. Now you know how to create this report, and I believe that you will succeed when it comes to creating your own report with the help of our macros and tips and tricks that we shared with you today. Please know that these apps provide much more functionality. You can explore it by yourself during the free evaluation period. I'm happy to answer your questions. Please feel free to contact me via email, Skype or LinkedIn. Thank you. Bye.